Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live chat. I'm Angela Walters from Quilting Is My Therapy and it must be Thursday, 3 p.m. Central if you're here because that is when I go live. And today I've got a fun chat. I'm gonna be talking about working through a quilt from start to finish, but I have a very special guest that wants to come say hi. So come here, Truman. Today is Take Your Children to Work Day, and my kids are too old, they don't love me, they don't wanna come, but my nephew, Truman, Hi. is in the studio with Jessica, this is Jessica's son. I'm his favorite aunt, is that right? Yeah, okay. He's gonna be here help monitoring the questions, and he'll bring them to me at the end. So Truman, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. You're welcome, have fun. Awesome, so what we're gonna talk about is how to do the reverse applique technique, and I'm going to talk through how I made this quilt and I even took pictures throughout the process, so you'll kind of kind of see it evolve. Um, today, I was supposed to be at Missouri Star for filming, but that fell through, so last minute, I thought, oh, what am I gonna show? I will show this particular quilt, so it should be pretty fun. I'm gonna talk about reverse applique, I'm gonna talk about thread painting, and how to face a quilt. All random stuff, but it comes together to make a beautiful finished quilt. Before I get to that, though, a couple of uh, housekeeping or announcements. Jeanette D. Strake one last week's giveaway of the English paper piece pack. So Jeanette, go ahead and email Jessica at quiltingismytherapy.com, your email address and, or your address, and she'll get that sent out. And this week's giveaway is a thread pack. Ooh, you know, I love, love my threads. We actually carry every color of glide thread on our online store, and it's one of my favorite things to go pull through the threads and look at them all. So to enter the giveaway, just leave a comment telling me hi or what you think about threads. And next week's live chat, I will announce a winner. And next week's live chat is going to be great because I'm going to finally, finally, finally get to announce my machine quilting rulers through Creative Grids, brand new rulers. Um, they've been delayed, 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 but they're gonna be here and I'll finally get to talk about them and show you how to use them and how to create some fun designs. So you won't wanna miss uh, next week's live chat. All right, so let's get to the pictures. Let's talk about what we're gonna see. Um, first of all, when I thought about doing this quilt, um, the quilt walk was definitely on my mind. So the quilt walk is June 18th. I know if you've watched my live chats, you already know that. But at our quilt shop located here just outside Kansas City, we're gonna be doing an outdoor type show and tell where you can collect the pieces of a pattern designed exclusively by me, by me exclusively for the quilt walk, and you can see tulip pink as well. So um, you can check out Quilting is My Therapy for more details on that. But as part of the quilt walk, we're gonna have some exhibits. So we'll have a tulip pink exhibit, but we're also going to have a thread painted uh, exhibit. So when I sat down and was thinking about this, making this quilt, I thought, hmm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a little bit of thread painting on it as well. You know what I love about friends? Friends are great. They talk you into stuff you wouldn't normally do. And this particular quilt that I showed you was inspired, uh, was part of the Cherrywood Challenge that's coming up. And my friend Irene DeLay talked me into it. You should look her up. She's on Happy Fun Quilts on uh, Instagram or social media if you want to find her. But she kind of, we decided to do this and I thought, oh, well, I'm going to make this quilt. So my inspiration for the quilt was actually this one. So this is a quilt I made for my second book, probably, I don't know, 10 years ago. It's uh, minimally pieced, it's quilted, and it has some um, painting, actual like fabric paint on it. And I thought that's the inspiration I will use for this quilt. So the quilt that I made is part of a challenge. You get a fat quarter bundle and you have to use something about graffiti. So graffiti was kind of that challenge. So looking at that, I thought, ooh, let's do a brick wall kind of minimal and let's quilt something like it's graffitied on that wall. So that's kind of the inspiration I have. And then I decided to go with the reverse applique technique. Now, if you have watched any of my live chats, you have maybe already seen uh, the free motion challenge about this or previous live chats, but the reverse applique technique, which you'll see here in just a second, how it goes together, is such a fun way to practice machine quilting to create different effects that aren't your normal quilt. And this particular one right here is a great example of a reverse applique quilt. Um, it's bright and bold underneath with that navy on top and you just cut away to reveal. And again, I'm gonna show you here in a second how that comes together. Uh, but it's such a fun way to highlight fabrics like I did in this one and add more quilting. I mean, you can really kind of take it to the level that you want. Now, this is not a technique that I came up with, but it's a technique that I love. And when you see it come together, I think you're gonna love it as much as I do. If you wanna check out my YouTube channel, I have a whole little video series about it, about layered quilting, reverse applique, where you can layer and cut and layer and cut, and so it's a lot of fun. And that was kind of the inspiration. So I thought I'm gonna do reverse applique, 
And then I'm going to incorporate some thread painting in it. So again, because of that, that exhibit that's coming up here at the quilt walk. Now thread painting is where I'm using colors, layering them on top of each other just to give it a different effect. I'm not really necessarily talking about quilting a very ornate butterfly or anything like that. I'm just adding some layers of color to the quilt and you'll kind of see how that adds up together. This was also featured in our the last free motion challenge, the Fabulous Feathers Challenge. You can check out that video about adding layers of color. And I also did a whole live chat about it, so you can, you can check it out. Okay, so I took pictures in progress as I was making it, so you can kind of watch it come together, because when it's all finished, it's very difficult to see how that came together. So here is my small little quilt. Um, part of this challenge dictates it should be 20 inches, so I made my little quilt about 22 inches to give myself some wiggle room. And you can see it's pieced with that um, minimal kind of brick wall kind of look to it um, with the dark colors that were in that fat quarter bundle, just kind of randomly put in there. So one thing I did a little bit different, and I wouldn't suggest this for a regular quilt, but I didn't use batting. I used soft and stable uh, foam. And so this is something that's more for bags um, or like upholstery, but man, it quilts up so beautiful and it makes that quilt lay nice and flat. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit stiffer, definitely not for a regular quilt, but it gives it some oomph when you're quilting it. So that's what I did there a little bit different. One thing I wanna point out is there was a question um, that was asked on the type chat before I went live, asking about whether I float my quilt tops. And it's hard to see in this picture, but I do. I actually don't pin my quilt top to the long arm. I pin the backing on, I get it nice and taut and in the right position, and then I just lay the quilt top on top of it. There are some things you have to do as you work your way through the quilt, um, but it's a fast, easy way to go about it. All right, now I'm quilting. So this is a time where I put my headphones on and I listen to a book or some music and I just have fun. And I decided to go ahead and in the bricks, quilt just echo lines, something nice and basic, and work my way along that. So that was kind of what I did in those areas. But on that quilt that I showed you that was my inspiration, I had some big circles or bubbles that kind of laid over the bricks. And so I decided to do that as well. So my idea was I would have my bricks quilted and then those pebbles just kind of fall right in the middle on the diagonal. Now, one thing I knew is I knew I was gonna be doing some thread painting on this. And so I made my pebbles kind of big because after I add layers and layers, they can get a little bit smaller. And let's be honest, it's just quicker to quilt them a little bit bigger. So adding those pebbles and I just took a few in progress so you can kind of see it starting to fill in. Um, I could have done this on my sewing machine. I'm just much quicker on my long arm, so I decided to go that route. And so that means I have to work very top down. So I'm quilting straight lines, pebbles, straight lines, pebbles, just working my way throughout the quilt. And here you can see it developing uh, more of those pebbles, more of the straight lines over on the edge. Um, just a lot of fun, pretty basic, pretty easy for me and just keep on going till I get to the end. And so you can kind of see as I'm going, I had fun taking pictures. Now this is finished, so this is the wall finished quilting. I have those pebbles down the middle, you can see those straight lines, and then I was gonna do something di different. I'm gonna use the layered quilting to create that feather. So my graffiti, my tag, if I was like a graffiti artist, would be a feather, big, fun feather. So I knew I was gonna do that, and I decided with the reverse applique technique, you actually layer fabric on top and quilt and cut away. But instead of using just one piece of fabric, I pieced uh, a center of fabric. So here I have the orange on top, the green on bottom, and I pieced this kind of, these wavy lines, these organic kind of curves in the center. Um, just to give the final result a little bit more oomph. That's where you see that color come out in the actual quilt. So this is kind of crazy if you think about it. I took all the time to piece the wall, piece this piece, and I'm gonna cover it up and cut away. But much like graffiti is, graffiti is like just layers on top of layers. So I figured let's go for it. And I knew that if it didn't work out and it didn't look well, well, I wouldn't enter the challenge and I wouldn't show you all. But since it did turn out well, I, was, I went, decided to go for it. Now on top of that, because you know, one layer is not quite enough, let's do some more. I put another layer on top and this is going to be like the outline of my feather. So you can see that black. Now here's where I ran into trouble. I want that, fe that feather to go diagonally I was decided it was gonna go opposite of the pebbles, but I didn't have enough black to make that whole length. So I pieced on some gray on the ends to make it stretch out long enough. Um, I didn't know how that would turn out. It, I think it looks okay. Um, if I had more black, I would have done black for the whole thing, but it's a challenge for a reason. You have to make it work. So I have my quilted piece. I have now two pieces of fabric layered on top. And you can see here the kind of trans the, the layers of it. 
Now it's time to start quilting. This is where I have so much fun. I decided to go with a feather. I didn't mark it out. I just kind of quilted my spine, came back and added my petals. If this is something you wanna try and you wanna do a feather, just make sure they're big enough because I'm gonna to need to cut out around it. I don't want a bunch of little, little areas. So this is a fairly big, um, big feather filling in that area. And once I was done, you can see here's the finished product. I decided to go with orange thread because there was a lot of orange in the uh, center piece, that multicolor piece. And it just, I liked it, how it looked on the black. So I went with the orange thread. It's actually Marigold Glide. So if you're taking notes, that's a great orange. It's kind of like dark, but not too, too pumpkin looking. All right, so now I'm done, right? I have my quilted piece. I put my fabric on. I have quilted my main element. Now it's time to cut away. And let's be honest, this is the part of the technique that can take a while. Um, that bigger quilt that I showed you, that very first one, that took forever to cut away. But it's something nice to do when you're watching TV or, you know, can't be at your long arm. So here I'm just kind of showing you what it looks like. So the first bit, I'm cutting away the fabric outside of my motif or my feather. And you can see that top layer cut, it, cut off. And then you can still see that second layer that I haven't cut off. But then I'm going to do that. I've cut off both. And you can see now, finally, the um, brickwork underneath it. So I'm cutting off that area. So what I do is when it's on the long arm, since it's nice and taut, I go ahead and cut off the big sections. And then I take it off to cut off the little pieces. So this is now come off my long arm. You can see that feather. I have that um, black. And then you can now, again, see that little brick wall behind it. Now comes the more tedious part, right? Now I gotta start cutting away that top layer that's inside the petals. And like I said, this is a great thing to do when you're on TV. So I did it while I was watching TV. I did it when I was at my family's house last night, made a mess on Jessica's table. It's all fine, um, but it's, it's kind of fun to see those things kind of pop out. So here I am making that first cut carefully, 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 trying to cut the top layer without cutting the second. I did cut the second layer one time, but I'll just put a dab of fabric glue on it and call it good. Um, so I'm just leaving myself about a quarter of an inch around the quilting, because if I cut it too close, that fabric might fray and it, I won't have that outline. I wanted that kind of, that outline with that dark fabric. And so I just started. Now, since I just laid that vibrant multicolor piece down, I didn't know where the colors were gonna pop up out of this feather. And that's kind of the fun part. It's like, do you remember those old drawing things that have like the rainbow and has the black stuff on it? You scratch away the black stuff. It's kind of like this, except it takes a little bit longer. And it's always fun when I can see the different colors of the fabric underneath popping out. So now begins the tedious process of cutting it away. It's, it's actually not too bad. It's very um, satisfying in a weird way just to cut it away. Like, I don't know. I don't know what that says about me. But I just took a few pictures as I was going. Um, cutting that out and it's this is where the quilt really starts looking bright and fun because up to this point it's been kind of just a lot of gray and I knew with graffiti I want it to be bright and fun there is the finished set part of this process where I cut away that black so now that very top dark gray black fabric now looks like an outline and that's really what I wanted I wanted that um, to really make that feather defined but I love quilting that's my thing. So I thought, you know what? Why stop here? Quilt it till it's dead and add some more quilting has always been my motto. So I decided to put it back on my long arm and add more quilting. And that's what's fun about the layered quilting technique. You can quilt it, cut away, add more quilting, cut away more, whatever you want. But I decided it needed some more quilting to really give it some oomph. So I decided before I started, I'm going to quilt down inside the feather petals because I don't, it was kind of like a little bit wrinkly because I had the quilted and then more quilting on top of it, I wanted to add that. And then I thought I would play with a little bit of thread painting. Now, one thing I wanna stop real quick and point out, I already had my quilted piece before I put on my fabric and quilted over it again. And that means, you know, the back has got a bunch of different quilting designs all layered on top of each other. It's not gonna look cohesive on the back, but since this is an art piece and they're not judging the back, I'm not worried about it. I also went with a busier backing so that you wouldn't see that. If you're worried about that, this is probably not the technique to try because you're gonna have, like I said, a lot of overlapping designs on the back. All right, so I loaded it and now it's time to start quilting. And in each of the different petals, I just did some different designs. Um, you can't really see the quilting a whole lot. So I did some petals, I did some little feathers, um, I did some little swirls and curls, whatever, um, just to really kind of fill in that area. 
And it just so happened that that orange marigold thread worked great over the whole thing. So I just kept it for all those petals. If I had had a little bit more time and if it was a little bit bigger, I might have switched thread colors, but I really wanted to get this done before the live chat, so I was on a time crunch. Then I decided, wouldn't it be cool if it looked like you had the feather and you had those, peb those pebbles around it, like if they look like they're colored as well, almost like the color's kind of seeping out from behind the feather. Now, I gotta tell you, I was a little nervous about this because there is always a point where you've done too much and I don't wanna cross that line, but I figured let's just go for it because I knew it would look kinda cool on that gray fabric. So deciding that I would use that same marigold orange thread, I would go over, quilt directly over the petal, pebbles that are showing behind that feather or around it. So here you can see around those circles, I just went directly over the gray ones uh, to add that little bit of color. Now, if you're wondering why not just do it in those colors first, in the free, uh, Fabulous Feathers Free Motion Challenge, I talk a little bit about it, um, but I love to go ahead and lay down the design with a matching thread color because as I build up those other thread colors, it gives me a groove to kind of fall in and I think it just looks better. But I could have just skipped the gray and just did all the pebbles now, but you know, I don't always do things the easy way. So once I added my marigold color, I decided I wanted to go into yellow and so or yellow orange. And so this is where Buttercup came into play. Uh, Buttercup is like the perfect shade of like an orangish yellow. It's just so pretty. And I knew that next to that orange, it would kind of give me that gradation that I wanted, that color, um, color change. So the next row of petal, pebbles that were around the feather got this color over the gray. One thing I did to help blend it together is I overlapped it a bit. So where my orange pebbles were, I would overlap my yellow a little bit. So there's some with both just to give it that, that color change. I don't know if it's necessary, but I like quilting to, you know, quilting a lot. So maybe it just gives me an excuse to add a little bit more quilting. So adding my next layer of color. And there you can see at the top, I'm starting to get that color pulled out. I've got my feather filled in with all those different designs, but then you can see on the other side, the bottom side of the feather, I haven't added that other color yet. So at this point, I knew I was kind of on the right track because I could see that color. I just loved, I don't know, that pop of color around the feather. And that feather is so big and vibrant, there really wasn't a lot that was gonna take away from it. So I knew at this point, it was time to like go ahead and, and keep going with this. So a little bit closer picture of the quilting inside the petals. Again, different designs, different fillers. I knew you wouldn't be able to see it a whole lot, so have fun with it. And then it's time to do the same on the other side. So I took that same gold or a marigold thread and went around the pebbles um, just right next to that feather just to kind of give it that little bit of oomph. So now here's what I noticed as I got going, when I initially quilted that first brick quilt, I had my pebbles going up one direction and then I decided to put my feather going up the other way, but it just looked empty without the color going all the way down. So I decided, what the heck, I'm just gonna quilt these right over the top of those bricks. I could give it some artistic you know, reasoning, like I just love how it looks like it's layered on top or whatever, but I just changed my mind as I was going. So I decided, eh, well, I'm gonna layer it right over the top of it and keep on going. So sometimes it doesn't always work out the way you want it to, sometimes it does. Now for one hot second, I took a quick little video of me quilting. So here I am holding the phone and trying to drive right over it, but this is where I'm using that buttercup, that light you know, yellowish, uh, orange to go over the previously quilted pebbles and then also going over some of the orange ones so you can kind of see what that looks like. If you decide to try this, you really got to set your perfectionistic tendencies at the door because here it's not going to be perfectly on the line, but I'm going to try really hard to get it close and try to keep it smooth and just kind of building it up. So it, it's really fun to see this develop with the different colors as I work my way down. So just like I did on top, orange and then my buttercup just to kind of add a little bit more of that color. All right, next picture. And you can see here, again, this is where it's progressing. Now, when you're so close to any quilt, any quilting, it's hard to really get the whole perspective of it. So I had to break thread quite often, step back and kind of look at the effect I was getting because it's really hard when you're that close. So there was a lot of thread changes, a lot of starts and stops, but since it was only a 20 inch quilt, it didn't take too long and that was, that was pretty good. All right, so here's where we are now. I have my orange, I have my yellow, you can see at the right, bottom right, where that those pebbles don't quite go all the way with the feather, I knew it needed to. It just looked like I forgot to finish it. And that's why I started quilting them right over those um, fake bricks that I quilted. And you can kind of see um, how it's starting to progress. So I decide, you know what? 
not only do I want to add more quilting all the way along that feather on the top and bottom, I'm going to go ahead and incorporate another color. And so I decided to add a little bit of green as well. So here I'm just being picky. I'm just finagling, just playing around with it. And I had to be careful because sometimes in my mind, I have to remind myself that better is the enemy of done, right? Keep thinking, I'm just going to tweak it and add a little bit more and you never actually finish it. But since I had a, a hard deadline, I had this live chat, I knew that I would get it done because, you know, there's nothing like a deadline to make me get stuff finished. So back at the top, um, I've added my orange and my yellow. It's time to add my other colors. And you can see here, I decided I need to add more pebbles along the bottom. All right, so I'm starting to add my petals and my different colors, pebbles and different colors to fill it in, to finish up all along that feather. Um, it took a little bit longer, but I was super glad it looked way better. But one thing that happened, so if you think about when I quilted those first chunks of pebbles and then I quilted the feather over it, I had these pebbles that were cut off, right? They looked like they were going behind it. Well, I wanted to continue that in the rest of the quilt. So some of those pebbles are quilted so that they look like they're going behind the feather. I don't know if anybody would else would have noticed this, but I really want it to be cohesive. And it's also a great way to keep your pebbles the same size, even if you have a smaller area. So some of the pebbles are just partial ones, looking like they're going behind the feather. Some are smaller and bigger. I was trying really hard to change up the size and make sure that some of them look like they were going behind. And then here we can see now I've kind of blended in together. And we're gonna keep on going. So there's my, my orange and my yellow. I just love it. It looks so pretty, that orange just pops right off of there. And then I decided, you know what, it's, I want to add some green. I, I wanted to add a little bit more color just to kind of go. And if I think it'd be so fun to have a whole quilt where the, the colors just keep on going like a rainbow. But, you know, again, I got to rein myself in and I decided to go with limerick. So this was a difficult choice because the green in the quilt is not this green. It's like a, a green, like a hunter green or a real green. But I loved how this had a hint of yellow to it to help blend. But I wasn't sure. I was just like, I don't know, it might be too much. So I went up to the corner of the quilt in the very, very corner and I did just a little bit with the green so I could see it before I started. I wanna make sure like, cause I didn't wanna mess it up. I loved where it was, but I thought it could add a little bit more. So when I'm not sure, just a little test somewhere, knowing that if it didn't look good, I would just leave it in there and, and just not point it out during my live chat. But I liked it, I loved the green, how it just kind of added that little bit of look to it. And so then I did the same. Quilting the next kind of row of pebbles, overlapping with the yellow a bit just to give it that that kind of shaded effect and and kept going and so there you can see the green i'm so glad i added it because i think it just looks great and if, again if i had more time i would have taken it to the blue but you know time so when we get down to the side of the feather i had a little bit of a problem because i had quilted some straight lines to look like they're extending from the feather down so you can see the pebbles and they see just a couple straight lines but as soon as i did like those four of them i was like oh, this doesn't look good I decided not to do it, but I knew I wanted to add pebbles over them and I knew I'm not going to rip it out. So I just quilted my pebbles so that they kind of fit in between the lines or let the lines overlap it and knowing that at the end of the day, it probably wouldn't be very noticeable. Now, you might be like, well, Angela, I, you're making it noticeable because I'm pointing it out to you. Well, that's my job. I'm trying to show you that as you're going through your quilt, you don't always know what it's going to look like. It's not always going to work. You're just going to have to adapt on the fly. And sure, I could have ripped out those straight lines, but I mean, come on, I was on time crunch and I knew it was going to be fine. So as you're working through your quilts or your creative projects, if it's not working the way you want, don't be afraid to switch it up and then just don't point it out, especially during a live chat. But then after I added my orange, it's time to, again, add a little bit more yellow because I want it to look like it was done all at one time and then continuing on. And when it was done, I, I was really happy with how it looked. Now I have to do the same on the bottom, right? Because I, I want it symmetrical. I always say, you know, um, once is a mistake, twice is a design choice. Just try to make it symmetrical. So added that yellow and then came in and added the green and just kind of kept building it up. So at this point, I'm, get, I'm like kind of getting nervous because it's almost noon. I've got to get to the building. I gotta, you know, get my pictures ready. So I need to, I need to land this plane. So I went ahead and, and decided, you know what? That's pretty good. I love how it looks. I'm gonna call it done. So here is the finished unbound, unfaced quilt, 20 inches. Um, the color is a little bit edited because of that blue is in the background, but ultimately I love how it turned out. Um, I love the different effects it gives, and it, it was just a lot of fun. I got to play with my threads and and have a good time with it. Now what I decided to do because I. We all know I don't like binding. Like if you've listened to anything I've talked about, I don't love to bind, uh, but this does have to be finished to enter the challenge. So I decided to add a facing. And a facing is kind of like an art quilting thing where the whole edge wraps around so that there's no binding. It's just kind of like how it is. And facing 
is really fun for me to do, although I do think it's a little bit more labor intensive than binding. So I don't know why I don't mind it, but I don't. So I just took some pictures of the facing uh, process in case you're wondering what that looks like. So basically I have my trimmed square quilt, um, very important, you wanna make sure that it's nice and square. And then I cut out some strips and some squares. And I was just winging it. They're about five inch squares, about four inch strips, just whatever I had. And I just use the same fabric I had as the backing fabric. But what's great about facing is since you don't see on the front, it can be anything. You can use whatever you have. I just already had those strips. Then you're going to go to the iron and you're going to iron them all in half. You're going to iron the squares into triangles and you're going to iron your strips into folded strips. And then this is where the magic of it comes out. So once you have those, it's time to start facing your quilt, which I think is such a fun word, facing. Like I'm facing my quilt. Um, I'm facing my quilt to face it. I don't know. I'm getting off on a tangent. But first, you're going to start with your corners. You're going to take those folded triangles, those folded uh, ironed triangles, and align them in the corner, raw edges to the corner, and you're going to stitch them down. So I'm going to do that in all four corners, stitching them down. Um, you can see just the top and bottom here. This is so weird. I had a friend teach me this a long time ago, and I remember during this process thinking, what are we doing? This is not right. But just wait for it. It does, does turn out pretty good. So here is that part, and now I need to add my strips. And the strips are gonna go on the sides, raw edges to the edge of the quilt. Now this picture, I don't know why I didn't realize it, but I hadn't centered. You wanna center your strip on your side, and you want your strip to be shorter than your quilt, but not shorter than your triangles. So I don't remember what these were cut at, probably like 19 inches, something like that, 18 inches. Um, but putting that raw edge on there, and I'm gonna stitch them down. So stitch all four sides down. So it's not continuous. I, I think I kind of really like that. I don't have to worry about turning the corner or having it look weird. And this is where the magic happens. I'm gonna flip those triangles right side out and you're gonna see kind of as I'm turning it, that fabric's gonna go to the back. So here I've got it kind of wrapped around. Now here's the thing about it. I need to make sure it lays nice and flat. And remember, I use soft and stable, which is pretty thick. So I'm gonna I use an iron to make sure that whole fabric was pulled back and iron it nice and flat. And this is where you can kind of get a little creative. I can kind of pull it a little bit, like if it's not perfectly straight, um, I want it to be nice and straight when I'm ironing it down and just hot iron and just hold it and just iron that sucker down and work your way around all four sides. Don't forget to poke out your corners too because um, you want that nice sharp corner. So here you can see it's ironed behind. Now I have where the quilt just ends. And just looks like, you know, no binding, no frame on it. Really kind of fun. And last little bit is time to hand sew it. Now I haven't had a chance to hand sew my down yet, but I used pins to hold that fabric down. And I actually pin, you can see if you look real carefully, I pin up close to the edge because that's the most important part. I want that faced edge to be nice and flat. I don't wanna see that fabric from the back at all. And then as I go through, I'll add some more pins along the bottom and, and hold that on. And then when I'm done, I have my finished quilt. So there it is, not yet sewn down, but the facing is, the face, Faced, facing, it's on, and it's it's ready to enter the challenge. So and the challenge uh, deadline is May 1st. I have never been this early ever. So like I said, nothing like a good deadline to make me get done. So I'm super excited about it. So I know that was a lot of, I don't know, different techniques, but it's kind of fun to see something come together, I think from start to end, and also kind of um, understand like during the process, it's not always gonna work out the way that you think it's gonna work out. So hopefully that, that made some kind of sense. Now, one benefit to watching the live chats live is you can type out your questions and Jessica will write them down. And then my very cute, very sweet nephew Truman will bring them over to me. So I'm gonna answer your questions live. If you're not watching live, no worries. You can always um, leave a comment on the video and I get on there from time to time to answer them. Have I used Glide Glisten metallic thread or um, any kind of metallic thread? Yes. I have done some thread painted pieces with all the threads, metallic, shiny, all that. Um, I didn't for this piece because I knew I was on a time crunch. Metallic thread, you have to quilt slower. And as we put more and more layers together, shredding is just going to happen. Um, so it takes a little bit longer with those. If I do use that, I just kind of in little bits, not over the whole quilt. I'll just kind of add a little bit of sheen, although it would have been fun to add some uh, metallic to make it look like it was shiny. But anyway, I digress. Um, do I use magnets? I'm wondering if it's talking about loading the quilt. So some people will use magnets to hold their quilt top to their bar. I don't, but I know some people do and you can definitely do that. Um, did all that quilting compress the soft and stable more than you thought it would? It really does. I mean, the soft and stable is about a quarter inch thick and when you're done, it's about that size too. 
But I knew that with all this quilting, it would shrink the whole piece, which is why I made that initial quilt two inches bigger than it had to be. Because I knew that when I quilted it, it would end up smaller. And I'm, I probably should have made it more because it was like I only had about an extra half inch all the way around. So, oh, thank goodness there was enough because that would have been really bad. What scissors did I use to cut out the applique? Um, pointy, sharp scissors. I love Tula Pink's uh, scissors, her micro tip ring scissors. Those are great. You want something that you can wiggle the point in there. And then once you get in, just kind of zip through it, kind of like you're cutting wrapping paper. Um, anything sharp is going to work. Curved scissors work well as well too. Um, just make sure they're comfortable to use because your hands will be cutting a lot. What weight glide did I use? I love 40 weight glide. They make a 60 weight as well, but I love how it just has that bit of sheen. It's still um, strong enough to handle machine quilting, but it still kind of blends in nicely. The 60 weight is great too, but I knew the quilting one, I needed that to be more of like a wow like on this and I really want to show. Um, but I use 40 weight glide on almost all my quilts. Um, how did I hold the feather down on top of my background? I just laid it on top of there. Laid it on top of there and as I quilted, I just kind of held it in place and then and went on. If it was gonna be a bigger element or stretch beyond the space I had available to quilt, I probably would have pinned it down. But since it was just filling in that space that little bit, I just kind of held it in place. And since I started from one side to work to the next, if it shifted or anything, it would just kind of shift on down. I didn't even think about talking about that. Yeah, that's a good question. How can this be done on a domestic machine? The exact same way. So you would still make your quilt sandwich, you would still quilt it, you would still layer your fabric on top. In that case though, I probably would pin those fabrics down just to keep them in place, um, those top two fabrics, because you're shifting a lot. Again, on the long arm, it's just kind of laying there, but yeah. It's, it's never, no, it's no problem. You can do it the same way. I don't know if I would do the soft and stable on a sit down machine on a bigger quilt because it's pretty thick. This size, no problem. It, it just stays right there. But if I was doing a really big quilt, I probably wouldn't try that. Do I ever use both sit down and long arm on the same quilt? I do. And I usually do that during the free motion challenge. So in the video series, which surprise, surprise, I think, fingers crossed, I'll be able to announce the next free motion challenge quilting along May 19th. So Hopefully I can do that. Um, but during those video series where I show you how to quilt uh, a quilt or work through a technique in a free six part video series, um, I show it on how to do it on a sewing machine and a long arm both. And so usually I make my quilt sandwich, I quilt some on the sewing machine, I load it on the long arm and I quilt it. And I take it actually back and forth several times as I'm filming. Um, so yeah, I definitely do the same on both, it's no problem. Just like I loaded this after it was quilted that first time around, I just pin the backing and then tighten it into place. So it's, it's a lot quicker the second time around than it is to load the quilt. Um, this person says, I have a Bernina. Can I use Glide in the bobbin or should I stick with Aurifil? I use Glide in the bobbin. It's totally fine. You want to make sure you wind a little bit slower because it's a little bit slicker. It can kind of move around a little bit. So wind it slowly. And whatever bobbin you use, however you wind it, just make sure that it's nice and tightly wound. If you have your bobbin and it's squishy or it's not evenly wound, it's going to give you a whole world of trouble and you just don't want that. So. As long as your bobbin is wound correctly, you won't have any trouble. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. Great questions. I love answering the questions and I, I hope that was helpful. Um, so again, if you wanna try the technique, a great way to show off your favorite fabrics, a great way to practice machine quilting, if you wanna try some new designs and a great way to just make an unexpected kind of quilt, especially if you like the quilting more than the piecing. Again, if you have any questions, if I couldn't address them, leave them in the comments. Make sure you leave a comment if you wanna be entered to win the thread pack. I will announce the winner next week in next week's live chat, Thursday, 3 p.m. Central. I'm going to be talking about my new machine quilting rulers. But before I let you go, I think Truman wanted to make say something. Did you want to tell them anything? Come over here. What are we going to tell them, Truman? Are we going to tell them about quilting? Kind of. Don't forget to subscribe to my amazing aunt's amazing YouTube channel. Well done. And you know what? If Just do it for the kids. Do it for Truman. <laughs> Thank you, Truman. You are so great. So, yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can be sure to know um, about upcoming videos. And I hope you all have a great, happy, happy weekend. And I will see you next Thursday for next week's live chat. Happy quilting, everybody. Bye.